So we're going to switch gears a little bit and now we'll talk about single cell versions of some of the bulk assays that we discussed earlier. In particular, we're going to go over single cell RNA sequencing. And so the premise of the single cell based assays are that tissues, for example, are highly heterogeneous. And so because bulk assays like bulk RNA sequencing require you to collect RNA from millions of cells, part of the problem is that if you're collecting measurements over millions of different cells, then essentially the measurement that you get at the end of the day is going to be an average in some sense over all of the cells that went into your assay or your experiment in the first place. And so when you're dealing with tissues where there's many different types of cells, then in some sense you, you don't really know exactly what you're sequencing uh, because every sample is actually just a mixture of many different cell types and the proportion of those cell types can change across your different samples. Right, and so, yeah, as I mentioned, bulk assays collect uh, measurements over millions of cells and average them together. And so the goal of single cell assays is that really you're trying to separate the contributions of each individual cell uh, to your bulk sample. And so in the case of RNA sequencing, for example, suppose that you're interested in quantifying individual genes expression measurements. In a classic bulk assay, like bulk RNA sequencing, you would take your, say, for example, a primary glioblastoma, uh, you would uh, resect a small portion of that sample, and then you would collect all the RNA from those millions of cells and generate a single set of quantifications, or what's typically vec uh, visualized as uh, like a vector of measurements, where for each gene in the genome, you've measured how many times you've identified a read that's mapped to that particular gene. So in contrast, in a single cell-based assay, what you would do is instead of collecting all the RNA from those millions of cells and pooling them together, you'd, for example, uh, basically dissociate all of the cells such that you can isolate individual cells and you would punch those single cells through, for example, like a microfluidics uh, device that can separate those individual cells and then basically um, take all of the RNA from an individual cell with a unique barcode. And that would essentially allow you to separate out uh, which reads came from which cells. And in that sense, then instead of generating a single vector that quantifies uh, each gene's expression measurement across the whole sample, you'd instead get like a table or a matrix where you could quantify each gene or protein in the genome um, for every cell that you sequenced in the assay. And so in that sense, uh, you get around this problem of looking at heterogeneous samples because now instead of averaging together cells from many different populations, you're actually able to sequence each individual cell from each cell population separately and basically unmix them. And so it's worth pointing out again that the idea that tissues and cells are highly heterogeneous really under, underpins uh, a lot of the motivation of these single cell assays. And so if you think about cell identity and function, these are very kind of fluid con concepts and they uh, in part are very context dependent. And so obviously, for example, it's, it's important to uh, describe and be able to characterize what general type of cell uh, are contained within different samples. So um, in some sense, the function and identity of a cell is defined by whether or not they're, for example, like an excitatory neuron or an inhibitory neuron uh, or some kind of fibroblast. Um, but there are other factors which play a role in defining cell identity and function. So for example, if you're talking about uh, pluripotent cells, or if you're talking about uh, some kind of differentiation process, right? So differentiation is, is typically thought of as a continuous process where you might start with a kind of well-defined cell type, like a, say, induced pluripotent stem cell or an embryonic stem cell. And you might be interested in studying how that cell uh, differentiates and changes identity as it, as it differentiates from an iPSC cell to, for example, like an erythrocyte or a neutrophil. And so defining all of the states that a cell can exist between an iPSC state and, for example, an erythrocyte state 
can be really difficult because again, you know, that, that process of differentiation might take us all through a possibly incredibly large number of distinct states, like say like hundreds or thousands of different states as it moves, you know, through this differentiation process. And so, um, you know, if you, if you are trying to uh, characterize what are the sequence of molecular events that lead a cell to differentiate from iPSC to erythral site, then you might have to, uh, you could potentially be dealing with a problem where you need to be able to observe and sequence a cell in many, you know, hundreds of different states uh, along that path of differentiation before you can really understand how the process works. And so the point here is that um, to study that kind of fine detailed differences between individual cell states during processes that can be fast, like differentiation, uh, doing this with bulk assays can be extremely hard, if not impossible. So over the past decade, a number of single cell versions of the bulk assays that we talked about in this course uh, have been developed. And so there are single cell uh, assays for doing DNA sequencing, uh, attack seq bisulfite sequencing, as well as RNA-seq. And so of all of these different technologies that have been developed, the single cell RNA-seq based assays are the most mature and definitely the most uh, heavily used as of today anyways. And so for this lecture, we'll mainly be focusing on single cell RNA-seq based assays. But again, it's worth noting that there's single cell based versions of pretty much every major assay we talked about uh, in this class. And so the figure in the bottom right hand corner of this slide basically just illustrates to you how quickly this field has moved in the last 10 years or so uh, since the single cell based uh, assays have begun to uh, show up. And so you can see that one of the first whole genome based single cell uh, sequencing assays basically came out somewhere between 2009 and 2010. And back then they could really only sequence uh, the whole transcriptome of uh, one to 10 cells. Then nowadays you can see as recently as 2017, 2018, that uh, in a single experiment, people can sequence now up to like hundreds of thousands or even a million cells. And so you can really see that the, these capture technologies have improved uh, significantly over the years. Uh, despite this kind of huge progress in the last 10 years of developing mature single cell based assays, there's still a number of large challenges associated with single cell based uh, collection and analysis of the data. And so the three major challenges so far are basically, uh, number one, uh, challenges associated with cell isolation. And so it can actually be uh, pretty tricky to uh, dissociate bulk tissues into individual cells in a way that uh, doesn't kill that many cells does successfully isolate individual cells. Uh, the second major challenge is basically due to the limited amount of material uh, that you can get out of individual cells. And so one of the reasons why the bulk assays uh, require millions of cells is because you know, any given individual cell doesn't really contribute that much RNA or DNA or so on. And so even though um, some of the technological developments that have enabled single cell assays to work, basically, uh, are highly efficient at kind of not losing much RNA throughout the protocol. Uh, still, uh, there's still not a whole lot to work with when you're talking about material from an individual cell. And so that basically leads to implications in terms of downstream data analysis and how much uh, effective data you can actually get out of individual cells.